What if I told you you could custom water cool your entire PC for less than $100? We're talking full custom loop. CPU block, GPU block, pump, reservoir, fittings, 240 millimeter radiator, and a pair of fans. All for less than the price of almost any 240 millimeter AO currently available. See, recently we compared a premium 240 millimeter close loop cooler to a budget option in Budget versus Beast episode two. And I was really shocked at the price and performance differences between the two. So after that video, I've been wondering, could we do a full custom loop for the same price? And when Banggood reached out to see if I wanted to cover any of their products, I went on the hunt, found this entire water cooling kit for $90 and jumped on the chance to make this video for you guys. After they refused to send me some really unique Yeston and Asia only GPUs. So let them know in the comments that they should definitely send us some out so that I can show you guys. But in this video, we're going to check out what less than $100 gets you, where you might want to use a kit like this and where you probably shouldn't. Before we then install it and do some temperature testing. So budget Chinese water cooling from Banggood, it's either going to be Banggood or bang bad. Let's find out. So first, let's see exactly what you get inside the cheapest full custom water cooling kit on planet Earth. You get a 240 millimeter radiator with integrated barb fittings and a 19 fin per inch density, the same as most AIOs. There are two 120 millimeter DC controlled fans with absolutely no name or branding on them. That's always a good sign. You get a really good looking reservoir, which I was not expecting, an obscure pump to go with it, but it includes a nice mounting bracket that I do appreciate, some surprisingly good looking nickel plated fittings, and then some soft tubing screws and mounting hardware for the kit. And that's everything, so let's jump straight into the concerns of the kit before we build it, because there are definitely some that you should be aware of. Firstly, and some of you might have realized this, but you don't get an instruction manual. So you're just kind of on your own on this one. But there's only really one not so obvious section in the install process that I'm gonna try and make a bit more clear for you guys. An obvious area of concern though is that the GPU block isn't a full cover block. GPU blocks like this actually weren't that uncommon about 10 years ago, but the industry has moved towards full cover blocks due to the higher heat output of the surrounding components. Because of this, we may need to find a way to independently keep the GPU's memory and VRM in check, which shouldn't be too difficult. Another thing that's very much a concern, and you guys probably can't see this, but looking inside the radiator, it is almost definitely aluminium. And as we have copper blocks, it means that our rate of galvanic corrosion is going to exponentially increase if we don't treat this mixed metal loop like a mixed metal loop, using a good anti-corrosive additive and also replacing the fluid at pretty frequent intervals. But I'll also drop a link to some suggestions for making a full copper loop in the description for you, and a good article from EK on mixed metal loops as it can be fine. The liquid coolers that most of you are using are mixed metal loops. But let's take a look at the mounting hardware. And this is probably the most basic mounting system that I've seen. And although CPU mounting like this is mostly fine if you're careful, direct die mounting on something like a GPU is a lot more risky and is much easier to crack the die. So the system that we're subjecting to this kit is going to be my i5 9600K and RX 570 test bench, a relatively mid-range system for an entry-level kit. So let's build it. After pre-cheating and cleaning the components, I'm starting with the GPU. But bear in mind that you can also make this a GPU or CPU only loop by opting out of installing their blocks. So for the GPU, they're mostly all the same. Unscrew what you can until the cooler comes free from the board. Then give the die a good clean with isopropyl alcohol and attach the water block. Your mileage may vary, but for this RX 570, it does look like the heat sinks weren't directly cooling the VRM or the memory modules. Although if it was, we would just look to put some heat sinks on those components. But for this install, we're just going to worry about the die at the moment and attach our mounting solution. The way that I'm doing it for both the GPU and the CPU is going to be the same. Put the bolt through the back of the PCB with a washer on either side so the metal isn't making direct contact. Then clamping that with a nut for stability before mounting the block and securing it all with thumb nuts. I actually discarded the springs that came with the kit as they looked like they were more likely to slip through the mounting holes than actually help. This does require you to feel the correct mounting pressure though, which can be a bit tricky. My method for that is tighten it evenly until you can't wiggle the block by hand anymore. This shouldn't be too much pressure and you'll know if it's not enough when you test it. And if that's the case, then you can just give it an extra quarter turn to see if the temps come down. After doing the same for the CPU, it's just figuring out where you want your pump and reservoir to go and how you want your tubing to run. Then cut it to length, clamp it down and fill her up. So after some leak testing, it's time for some beauty shots before we have a look at the thermals.
looking pretty good. Even soft tubing loops just look phenomenal. So now's probably a good time to bring back the concerns from earlier and how I've mitigated them. As for the mixed metals concern, I'm using EC6 Clear Premix from XSPC, which has good anti-corrosive properties. But moving forward, I do aim to swap the radiator out for a full copper one. Other than that, I've also added some fans below the GPU to assist with memory and VRM temperatures, which may not be entirely necessary given that we have enough airflow, but I'll go over the performance numbers with you now before I talk you through who I think should and and shouldn't buy this kit. So jumping into our baseline results, I ran the GPU with the stock cooler of course and the CPU with the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. This gave us an average temperature of 73.6 degrees on the CPU and 68.8 degrees on the GPU. So when we ran the same test with the custom loop kit we saw some interesting results. Our GPU temperatures dropped quite dramatically over 20 degrees but our CPU temperatures increased by 5 degrees. Although this does make some sense as both the GPU and the CPU are being cooled by the same solution and the GPU that was previously cooled by a feeble two heat pipe design got a serious upgrade. While the CPU that already had a pretty good cooler on it now has to deal with the heat of the GPU too in the same cooling solution. So if we remove the GPU from the loop using the kit as a CPU only solution, we managed to drop the CPU thermal significantly, which might be a great solution for most people to just build this loop as CPU only. So it really is an exceptionally impressive kit for the price being one third the cost of other DIY loop kits from big name brands. And if you replace the fans to something a bit better better and a bit faster then you're likely going to see better results still. So let's talk through who I recommend this kit for and what would be a good use case for it. Because the way I see it there are two main use cases for this DIY loop kit experimentation and expandability. So experimentation, for those of you that want to get into custom cooling at some point, but want to test it out before you drop five, six hundred dollars on the premium stuff for your rig. Also knowing that you're going to have a lot of fun building this loop on hardware that you're maybe not too concerned about. But hey, you love doing this kind of stuff and you'll find a few fun wacky projects to use it with. As for the other scenario, expandability, I would recommend it for somebody's main loop 24 seven operation, but I would only feel comfortable recommending this if you replace the radiator to a full copper one. Just make sure that you still use a good fluid with it. This would allow you to custom water cool your PC now and start replacing stuff over time as your experience and budget grows, which makes this a really good starting point at an incredibly good price, even factoring in a copper radiator, which I'll leave a couple of suggestions below for you. And the result would give you a great continuous loop with similar maintenance to something like a full copper loop from one of the big name companies. So ultimately, was this bang good or bang bad? Well, it didn't leak. It did exactly what it was meant to. It's very well priced. And if you understand that this really isn't meant for your $3,000 computer, but it's for you tinkerers and for those of you getting into the custom cooling game, I'd say it's pretty bang good. So don't forget to check out this kit and my other suggestions in the video description and get subscribed with notifications turned on for more unique content such as this. But otherwise guys, I'll see you in the next one.